Welcome back to Turning Hard Times into Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor, and I'm really pleased to tell you that Dr. Quentin Henning is with me once again today. He's here this time to talk about another story that I'm really excited about, a company that I think has the potential to be a very large-scale, high-grade gold mine one day, and perhaps not too far into the future at that. Uh, the company is Lion One Metals. Uh, it's a company I've been covering in my newsletter since November 2019. Um, it's also a sponsor to the show, and Quentin is a technical advisor to Lion One. Uh, originally, Lion One had planned a relatively small but high-grade gold mining operation with an indicated resource of something around 468,000 ounces, a uh, cutoff grade of about 3 grams per ton, an overall grade of about 9.7 grams was outlined. However, over the past couple of years, management came to realize that the near-surface deposit that they were working on and developing was part of a much larger alkaline gold system. And these gold systems are rare, but when you find one that is mineralized, it can become extremely valuable. And it seems... Uh, Based on the work that's been done and carried out over the last couple of years, that's exactly what the Tuvatu project seems to be. Uh, and so, well, COVID has slowed down the exploration at Tuvatu somewhat, uh, but the drills are turning now, and we're starting to get some really exciting news. That's why I'm really happy to have Quentin here with me uh, today. Now, before we say hello to to Quentin, uh, I'd just like to tell you that the shares trade in Canada under the symbol LIO. In the U.S., you can buy them as I have under the symbol LOMLF, 156.4 million shares at around 85 cents in U.S. money, giving it a market cap of around $133 million. Welcome, Quentin, and thank you for joining me again. Thank you so much, Jay. It's really good to have you with me. Uh, let me start out asking you uh, to comment on a January 25th news release that was headlined with a drill intercept of 359.8 grams per ton gold over 1.8 meters. I mean, that's quite a hole. Uh, what can you tell our listeners that was learned from that and ongoing exploration that's been taking place at the Tuvatu? Yeah, look, uh, you know, by and large, we have gotten past the whole COVID uh, epoch, I'll call uh-huh. it. Okay. We're, we're drilling away with the all the rigs we have on site. We've got six rigs on site. Very aggressive program at this point. They're doing a lot of infill drilling. And why? Because they plan to go mining. Okay, so that's the subject of the news release that came out this morning, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. But to address this news release, those results that you mentioned are from the infill drill program. Uh, the infill drill program is exactly what you need to do as you plan development, plan your, your drives and so forth underground to start opening up some of these areas to go mining. And the numbers that are coming back from the infill program are absolutely stellar. They're often much higher grade than the initial resource that was stated for these areas. Uh, we're finding more mineralized structures. They're getting better clarity on exactly how these structures are oriented and and where they should go mining. So it's an absolutely delightful outcome. It's not just that number that you quoted, which, you know, is astounding, but this project keeps delivering high grades. There's like probably a dozen high grade intercepts listed in that news release alone. Yeah. Now, the company's also drilling deeper. Okay. They're drilling that uh, 500 zone, which is at depth that, you know, if you think of this like a, a tree and there's branches coming off and, uh, you know, there is a big high grade part of the system down at depth. They are uh, routinely drilling holes down into that with some of their deeper capacity drill- drills. And it's, you know, it's just a delight to see that start to, to develop a shape. It's actually expanding very rapidly at this point. So what should we expect in expiration from the, from the company over the next few months? Well, it's uh, going to be a mix of both this infill drilling, uh, delivering outstanding results, but also the, uh, the expiration that they're doing underneath the deposit. And soon they'll do some other drilling. We've developed a number of targets proximal to the deposit which will, I think, open everybody's eyes up to the fact that this is likely going to be a multi-million ounce system. Mm-hmm. Well, you, uh, this infill drill, drilling, as I understand it, is geared towards a small-scale startup production in the not-too-distant future, potentially. Uh, is Can you talk to us about that? Yeah, that's the subject of today's uh, news release. Uh, just, you know, to make it absolutely crystal clear, uh, you and I are recording this on Monday afternoon, but the company's issuing a news release, or has issued it, uh, as of the, the airing of this broadcast. Mm-hmm. And it, it is, I, you know, I feel guilty, Jay, I really do, because this is such an important news release for this company. 
it and I get you know I <laughs> I feel bad because I'm the guy that gets to say it first. Okay, uh, you know, all respect to Wally. Yes, a team that we've put together there. Um, you know, it's an honor to talk about this today. Okay, they they've made the the bold decision and they've been working very hard in the background to lay out all the plans to go ahead and develop a mine at Tuvatu. Mm. Now, let me tell you a little bit about this, okay? Uh, Tuvatu is a narrow load, uh, high, very high grade system, as we all know. Uh, and they need to get in there and literally bootstrap a mine, you know, okay? I mean, that, this is not cowboy grade. Well, who do we have in place? We have a guy named Patrick Hickey, who I've known for many years and worked with. He was at Newmont. Uh, he basically built and ran Batu Hijau, one of Newmont's biggest mines. Uh, which was located in Indonesia. He mm-hmm. also worked for companies like Sumitomo and built Embodabi, which is a, a nickel operation on Madagascar. And he's look, he's run mines and built mines all over the planet. The guy knows how to do this in his sleep. Uh, he has put together the plans in the past six or seven months that he's been employed by Lion One, and they have made outstanding progress. You know, while he's given them a green light to get this thing going, so. Uh, what are the highlights in this news release? Well, you know, as we know, this is a fully permitted uh, mining operation. The Tuvatu license is permitted. Production permits are in place. All right, that's very important. The engineering and procurement of a, of a basically a mill, a gold recovery plant, is now underway. So they are uh, actually working out the designs, finalizing the, the designs, I should say, and they're going to have that uh, contract in place and. Why? Because they want that thing delivered and installed sometime around the third quarter 2023 so that they can actually uh, start gold production by the, the end of Q4 2023. So the end of 2023, that's their target date. They've also selected the international mining contractor for the project. In fact, they're mining. Okay. They're, 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 when I say mining, they're blasting rock and putting the, the new portal in. Um, people can see a picture of that in the news release. This is absolutely delightful to see the company make this move. Uh, this is, by the way, a secondary portal. There is a historic portal and decline on the in the project right now, but this one is a very important component uh, that's going to be needed for developing this, uh, you know, this near-term mine. Uh, they're also ordering, you know, the basic equipment, like crushing equipment and so forth, and it is now uh, shipping to site. Uh, they've also got most of their mining equipment, uh, either selected, purchased, or ship, being shipped to site. So these are all big items, but they're, they're going along here. They're making this go. They've got their contracts for the water power tailings and explosives, as well as communications, uh, secured or in progress. Okay. And, and they've got, uh, you know, these, these sound like a bit mundane things, but they're not. They got no. their e- e- ERP and, uh, implementation. Sure. Underway. Mm-hmm. For accounting and supply chain and all the things they need in Fiji. Look, this is a bold step. Uh, this is, you know, the target here is to start with a 300 ton per day operation. Mm-hmm. But the key is this uh, operation can be scaled up. Okay. This is a, a, a dynamic story that's going to grow and they can easily scale this up to a thousand tons per day. This is an outstanding outcome. I mean, you know, this co- company could go from uh, having a, a, you know, a nice high-grade resource and, you know, having, we'll call it a small-scale mine, you know, for lack of a better term, to actually what would turn out to be a very significant gold mine, you know, in, in this day and age. I mean, a 1,000 tons a day, uh, you know, we're talking 360,000 tons a year. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you get your grades in the neighborhood of 10 to 15 grams, <laughs> you can see what that can deliver. Okay, this this could be a very significant gold operation very soon. Yeah. I would urge people to read the, the news release today and really look at it. I mean, it's just, again, it's a delight to be the first one to talk about this. But I think this is, uh, they're going to make it go. They're going to make it work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a modular uh, operate a mill that could be scaled up uh, depending on the uh, the ongoing exploration that will be, as I understand it, ongoing and a lot of deep drilling. And as you said, there's some other uh, other uh, targets there as well. And could you give our listeners just uh, in summing up here what these alkaline systems 
they can be absolutely huge. As you said, I think once you said on this show, as rare as hen's teeth is the way you put it. But there are a few of them operating around the world, and they're gigantic systems, high-grade systems. Could you just give our listeners a sense of the scale of some of these big alkaline deposits? Yeah, sure. Look, uh, Porgra is a great example. In fact, geology of Porgra is very similar to, to, to Vatu. Porgra is in uh, New Guinea. It's part of uh, the same island chain, though. We're talking about here, uh, and it's uh, geologically it's identical. You have uh, similar loads. They're basically high grade fracture networks uh, that might be a meter up to maybe three meters wide. Um, they go down to the bowels of the earth. I mean, they, I think at Porgra they're chasing these things, you know, upwards of a kilometer and a half at this point, maybe even more. I think uh, these things just keep on going and going and going. Uh, Macassa in Ontario, even though it's a much, much older system, like geologically it's, you know, the granddaddy of these types of systems, it's an immense deposit and it keeps on going. You know, they keep finding new mineralization on a routine basis. Uh, you have other systems here in Colorado. We have Cripple Creek, which I think between the, the initial high grade uh, that was mined by the old timers and now the low grade open pit, you know, we're approaching like 29 million ounces. Wow. Uh, you know, these things, they're interesting systems. Uh, you, you, you know, you get in there and you think, okay, you know, do we have a million ounces? And next thing you know, you got two. Next mm-hmm. time you look, you got four. Next time you look, you got eight. Yeah. And look, I mean, Vaticola is like that. Vaticola is about 35 or 40 kilometers northeast of Tuvatu. When Western mining started mining at Vaticola, they didn't know how big it was. Mm-hmm. You know, is it a million ounces? Well, yeah, maybe. They, they, you know, this is a long time ago, 85 years. It was a fantastic high-margin deposit, but nobody knew that 85 years later it would have produced 7 million ounces of gold. <laughs> and have 4 million ounces more reserves. I mean, they, you know, these are astounding systems. Yeah. So. Well, it's very exciting, no doubt about it. And so in summing up here, Quentin, what should investors be keeping their eyes on? I, mean, I guess there's going to be probably assays on an ongoing basis. In addition to this very important uh, announcement today. Yes, look, there's going to be assay, a very steady stream of assays. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if they, they work to expand their drilling and assaying capacity in the not-too-distant future because once you go mining, you need to do that. And, uh, look, they have a quick turnaround. they got the lab right there in Fiji. Mm-hmm. So a long, steady stream of assays, probably we'll call it once a month, you should see news on that. And then there will be news around the development. I think Mm -hmm. uh, continual updates around development will be something that a lot of people should focus on and, you know, pay attention to because this is a great story. Absolutely. In addition to the depth potential, it was starting to be revealed uh, at the Tuvatu. They, uh, as I understand, over a seven kilometer strike, there's several other targets that look almost identical to what you've got there. So very exciting story, Quentin. It is, it is, and I just can't wait to see gold bars come out of this place. (laughs) Yeah, me too. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, Really great, this update. 